Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, we're going to be looking at another episode of Measure with Mensa. In this particular episode, again, we're going to be looking at some sample questions found in the Mensa examination, and we're going to discuss how to solve them effectively. Let's start off with our first question for the day, shall we? Here it is. Insert the correct mathematical signs between each number in order to resolve the equation. What are the signs? So we've got a pair of arithmetic operators. They will be added to this particular equation according to their sequence. And we need to find out which of these pairs is the correct fit in order to get us the product 21. Now, um, if you look at it, um, if you look at each of the pairs, then the way that this works is if option A says minus and then plus, we need to put the minus first and then the plus. So we'll subtract first and then we add. So that's how um, this is going to work. So we're going to make sure that um, we follow the exact order that's given in each of the options and see which of these yields us 21. So. Um, how do we solve this question? Well, this is one of those simple questions where you can just add and subtract together. I mean, where you can just plug in the signs and then see if it works. So for option A, it'll be 11 minus 3 plus 7. 11 minus 3 gives you 8. 8 plus 7 gives you 15, which is not equal to 21. So A is not the right one. What about B? For B, the order is inverted. So what we get is 11 plus 3, 14. 14 minus 7 gives you 7. Again, the wrong answer. What about C? C asks us to multiply first, followed by addition. So 11 times 3 gives you 33. 33 plus 7 gives you 40. Again, incorrect. What about D? D asks us to multiply and then subtract. So 33 minus 7, this gives us 26. So again, the answer is wrong. It's not equal to 21. What about options E and F? Well, if you look at F, we it asks us to subtract um, across both sides. So 11 minus 3 is 8. 8 minus 7 is 1. Again, not the right answer. So therefore, by elimination, we find that option E is the only right answer. So if you add all three of these numbers, 11 plus 3 gives you 14, 14 plus 7 gives you 21, which is correct. So therefore, option E plus and then plus, the pair that contains two addition signs, is the right option. Now, let's look at another question. Which triangle continues this series? So, the series is here, and these are our options. So, we have a triangle saying 1, 1, 1, followed by 2, 2, 0, followed by 3, 1, 1, followed by 0, 2, 4. We need to find out which of these options would continue the series. Now, when it comes to figures, um, there are two ways of doing this. Either you can check out the actual numbers present in all the places and then find out a pattern. Or you can, um, um, or you can uh, use it arithmetic operators between the numbers in a particular figure and then find out whether these products or yields of arithmetic operators give us some form of pattern. Now, for this particular case, if you look at the position patterns, 1, 2, 3, followed by 0, doesn't give us anything. 1, 2, 1, 2 might give us something, but in the options, there is no 1 to succeed. And then you have 1, 0, 1, 4. Again, nothing significant through that pattern. So we would need to use the arithmetic operators. So let's start by adding all of these. Now, 1 plus 1 plus 1 gives us a total of 3. 2 plus 2 gives us 4. 4 plus 0 still gives us 4. 3 plus 1 plus 1 again gives you 5. 
2 plus 4 gives us 6, plus 0 is still 6. So as you can see, we find immediately a pattern. So over here, the pattern is the sum of all the numbers in the particular figure. That sum in increases by 1 as we move along the series. So as you can see, the last um, triangle that's given in the series has 6. So the next triangle that we must have will have a sum of 7. So all we need to do is check out which of these has a sum of 7. Eight of Option A already has 8, so it'll be greater than 7. So that option is incorrect. Option C, 2 plus 4 plus 0, that is 6. So again, that's incorrect. Option D has two 6s. Adding them gives us 12. Plus 2 gives us 14, so that's incorrect. 8 plus 4, again, you have an 8 over there, so that's greater than 7. So option E is incorrect. Option F has 7 as one of the terms, so 3 plus 2 gives us 5, 7 plus 5 gives us 12. Again, that's higher than 7. So the only option that is the right option here is option B, 3 plus 3 plus 1. See, when you put 3, 3, and 1, their sum adds up to 7. So therefore, that option is the right option here because the next triangle to continue the series must have a sum which is 1 more than 6, which in this case is 7. Now, let's look at the final question for the day. Discover the connection between the letters and the numbers. Which number should replace the question mark given here? So you have G giving us 7, M written as 13, U written as 21, J written as 10. What would be W's number? You have 14, 23, 9, 26, 2, and 11. Now, usually when it comes to letters and numbers, in most scenarios, we find that the number that's usually given has to do with its position on the alphabet. So in order to make, in order to make sure that you can navigate the position of a letter in an alphabet, we write them in bundles of five. So for example, A, B, C, D, E, then we go to the next row, A, F, G, H, I, J, sorry, that's I, so we'll have to erase a bit here, yep, so F, G, H, I, J, the next row will have K, L, M, N, and O, then you have P, Q, R, S, and T, and then you have U, this is V, this is W, X, Y, and the remaining letter is just Z. So you can just add it, add another column just for Z. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So this is way easier to count than writing them all along in a straight stretch and then adding the numbers. Now, <clears throat> let's look at each of the letters here. The letter G has the number 7 assigned to it. And if you look at the alphabetical sequence, G comes as the second letter in the second row. So that's A, B, C, D, E, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7. So as you can see, G is the seventh letter of the alphabet, therefore it has the number 7. If you look at M, that's the third letter in the third row. Um, so that's A, B, C, D, E, 5, F, G, H, I, J, 10, so 11, 12, 13. So M is the 13th term, so that makes sense. Now what about U? Um, so the first four rows gives us 20, so U is the next, uh, next letter after that, so it's the 21st letter, so therefore um, the number again, the number letter relation again matches out. J again is the tenth term, so that relation still holds true. So what we need to find out is the position of W. 
that would give us the number to replace the question mark. So as you can see, W is in the last row. So the fourth row gives us 20. Then you have 21, 22, and then 23. So the question mark must be replaced by the number 23. However, if you look at our options, you can see that option B turns out to be the option containing 23. So therefore, that is the right answer. 14 would give us N. 9 would give us I. 26 would give us Z, 2 would give us B, and 11 would give us F. I mean, K. My apologies. So, 11 would give us K. So, therefore, option B, the number 23, is the right option when it comes to replacing the question mark because 20, the 23rd letter of the alphabet is W. So, that concludes this episode of Measure with Mensa. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to get the latest updates from our channel, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.